They mainly like red cedar, or exclusively. Yeah. You can, uh, depending on what you're doing, uh, some of them are multiple rows of other shrubs and stuff too. Uh, just depending on how you want to set it up on your property. You know, Most of the windbreaks are, are cedars, mm -hmm. but if they're doing a wildlife, they may throw on some farms. I got one guy here, maybe a year or two ago, who did oaks and you know nut trees so that you know for the deer and what. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, the government's still getting some money to do that. <laughs> in certain, under certain uh, circumstances. The solar pump deal and the septic tank deal is still both real popular. We usually have trouble finding all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see in the next couple of years? I mean, one thing, one hurdle we're faced with this year is a tax slip issue. Do you see your crystal ball clear? Is it? <laughs> do, you, do you have a feel for what might happen in the next two or three years? Or do you think we're comfortable at this level? You know, honestly, I, I get a lot of the sky is falling reports that where I've only been doing this for about two two years. I, I don't know how seriously to take it um, as far as whether or not our funding will be completely cut um, or, or just downsized a lot. I mean, it, I guess it's very possible, however, our funds are supposed to come from the water plan should be fairly secure. The other thing when money gets tight, they talk about you know, consolidation, consolidation yeah. offices yes. and you know, centralizing maybe like three counties into one office or two. 
what I mean are, are some of the other counties funding about the same level we are? Or do you know? it, it varies. It varies a lot. Some counties, other their counties activities are a lot less, less than ours. ours. Uh, a lot of it's uh, your conservationist and your office manager promoting your programs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Looks like you got a little bit put away though too. Our wheat barrier deal, we can make some money on that. Yeah. That's, that's one of our biggest income. Right. Right. I guess with some of the mm -hmm. other counties, not yeah. necessarily our size. But we tried to build that a little bit so that we do get the line, but yeah. we have something hold that on and you know, we don't have to cut our office hours back or staff. So far we're pretty good. Yeah. Or you said the issue is probably gonna be about where it's gonna be at unless you get those above and I tell you how that'll work. <laughs> Well, I think our uh, the state has got us capped off that this is unless they change that this is the maximum that they will allow the, the counties to. to um, and, I, and I know some of the other counties, you know, we do good with the weed barriers and we see, do seed sales. We don't want to cut into um, you know our local um, proprietors as far as seed sales. Um, and that's only a real big seller if we have big CRP. Well, we thought we were going to. I think our numbers are way lower than the applications we got. In. I think we have seven or eighty applications and only thirteen got in. Yes. It's going to hurt some people. It's unbelievable. What that in? What? So that deal's changing. change after next fall. Yeah. So it's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you guys have any other questions? I don't. That's no. all I have. No. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Census or when the grant comes from from the KDM. He didn't put in the email. Oh. I I don't know. Just said county kind of applying for a grant that supports cross jurisdiction jurisdictional sharing, and they would be sharing a certified bill or it code. Yeah. So. But of course hard. the the application is due Friday.
start the ball rolling. I don't, I don't think that he had Mike Robinson look at, I mean, he initially told me he was going to have Mike help him with the budget. Obviously, he didn't. So, um, I don't, I'm not sure how we handle this. So, I need to do something. Some more clarification. I said we cut it in half a tell the video, that's what you get. That's what it's always been. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what the new guy needs to see that. I, I don't know. Uh, Is that what the uh, <laughs> you don't happen to have a detailed list of what last year's budget actually was? I For Joe? Yeah. I, can bring it I think the difference is just the one at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, he's I added. think there's a difference at the county council compensation. We didn't have that. Yeah, yeah, he had it in last year. He did. It's yeah. combined. Uh -huh. So the county council is going to make almost as much as the county is going to Well, then you get all the hourly bills, too. Probably a thousand or three thousand a month. I'd just be curious as to how you had that broken down last year. Last year's salary total was seventy six thousand. Total. Seventy six. Total. That's three for, two. That's all that's three. That's all three. three. That includes the secretary compensation. That's yeah. cheaper than no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Seventy five. Add. Yeah, that would be. Last year was seventy six thousand. So. That's what you budgeted. No. Um, Eighty-five. Isn't it? Forty-two. Uh, you're right. Yeah. Fifty-two. Fifty-two and thirty-three is eighty-five. Plus the ten thousand at the bottom. So I don't know. It's a little skewed, I think. Well, something's got to be a little cheaper than that. He's cut out some of his line items. Yeah. He's cut out meaning Copy. travel expense, postage, Copy. <laughs> court transcripts. Or, yeah, he's cut out several. We need, yeah. we need to work. Here you just we'll have just them back. I pretend really we didn't get that. Well, you can keep them. I don't, I don't want to get an intermingled with a real one. <laughs> well, okay. Do I have, have him prepare another one? Do I have a new guy do I would have the, I if Joe's not going to run, I would, have, I would yeah. have the new guy do it. It's okay. going to be his budget. I I'd show it to him when he comes in here. Yeah, I was thinking of giving him a I'd show him the old one from last year. Yeah, which one do you like? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of them was the one that was in there. Yeah. 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 Southwest Kansas Area Agency on Aging is asking for $900 again for next year, which is what we've given them for several years. So okay. That's not a major thing. Did we budget for it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's our headquarters for the Central Kansas Area on Agency. Southwest Kansas? Yeah. I mean, we're... Great, but Dodge City. 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 Oh, where you can sit wherever you want. <laughs> wherever you want. Let me get my sit here either. Well, let's sit here. Here is your extra something. And then I did upload a copy of the electronic report to the portal for you to download. Okay. Now you send that on to the state, don't you? Yes. We will send it that after you guys do the approval today. So. All right. 
I think that's not all of you, but I'll introduce myself. I'm Melissa Lake. I'm a manager with the firm. Um, I don't know if Nita has filled you in. Um, I know Amber usually comes down and visits with you. She has actually left our firm um, for for four reasons and things like that. So I'll be the main contact on your audit from here on out. No new surprises with your audit this year. Things went great. Good. So I want to start out with telling you guys that we appreciate the opportunity to serve as your auditors again. It's a great pleasure to work with the staff here. They're very helpful through the process. Um, like I said, we didn't really have, have any surprises throughout the process, so things went really smooth this year. Um, to start with the audit report, and stop me if you have any questions as we go through it, okay? I know you've been through this for several years, so you're pretty used to the routine at this point. I'm going to start on page two. That's the second page of our opinion letter. The main paragraph that you want to be concerned about is with our the unmodified opinion on the regulatory basis of accounting. That is stated that we are issuing a clean opinion on the county's financial statement sheet. Are we in the book or in the book? In the book. In the book. Oh, oh. Uh, I thought it was in the book. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. And, and I'm just looking at the paragraph that's titled Unmodified Opinion on Regulatory Basis. Since you guys approved the gap waiver to follow Kansas Municipal Audit Guide and the regulatory basis, that's how we're issuing our opinion. The language used previously to that is just stating that we are not following gap and are not issuing a clean opinion on gap just on the regulatory basis. And make, the main difference is we don't track accounts receivable, we're not tracking fixed assets and things like that for the infrastructure of the account. Any questions on the opinion? All right. Uh, the next two pages I'm going to refer to are page four and page five. This is basically your summary financial statement of all operating funds in the county. It does not include your uh, distributable funds and your agency funds on here. It's just make the operation funds of the county. On page five, you'll see that we have totals showing that we started with a beginning unencumbered cash of $6,237,444. We brought in $10,156,313, spent out $8,924,644 to get to an ending unencumbered cash of $7,469,113. Now that amount included accounts payable that we hadn't paid out yet of $56,118. So your actual ending cash at year end was seven million five twenty-five two thirty-one, which actually was an increase in cash of one point one point two million dollars for this year. So that was great that you were able to cut down and keep some cash reserves for you. Uh, did any of you have questions on the individual funds? Any individual funds that you would prefer that we, I go into detail about? I was going to say, if you, just, if you just run down page four and five, those are your main operation funds. If there's anything that you have questions about or anything that looks surprising to you on the figures. And they should be fairly similar to what you've seen throughout the year. Um, we, did, we had a few adjusting journal entries this year, and I'll go ahead and give those to you. And mainly it was cleaning up some transfers and moving some expenditures around to avoid some budget violations. Or like and I did send the two of you the spreadsheet to be able to upload those. And I don't mind all people because I didn't print myself a copy. Um, the first one was just dealing with the service for the elderly fund. We, paid that out of general fund initially, and we actually have a separate fund set up for that, so we moved that up. So general fund's cash is higher than what you had seen in your previous financials. The second one was dealing with um, reclassifying reimbursements you received for claims on insurance. Um, EMC must have given a reimbursement for what you had initially paid out, so we moved that back into your insurance reserve fund. The third one is just with the solid waste, and that was to avoid budget violations, so we reduced the transfer a little bit there, so we didn't have to cite that. And then the Register of Deeds Tech Fund, that was to avoid a cash violation there. 
on that. And that basically stems down to um, last year we had purchased that new scanner in the register of deeds. It didn't have that proper terminology in there last year for the um, on a fiscal funding clause in there saying that we can pay that over a period of time. So we did expense it all in the first year. So um, that's what created that. That should not be an issue in the future going forward because I believe that's fully paid off during this year. So, And then the last one is just a waste budget issues within the appraiser's fund. Um, we basically just moved the cost of the copier rental into the appraiser's cost reserve. Is that qualified to be fit for just out of that fund? Any questions on those journal entries? How about you two? Any questions? Those are the same ones we had talked about during Phil's work. So. All right. Within the footnotes of the financial statements, I'm just going to flip to page 11. There's really only one footnote in here that's going to be out of the normal. And you're probably used to saying it. I know Nina is. It's just regarding the Kansas statute that we're supposed to re, um, remit game license fees on a daily basis. <laughs> and I only point that out because it's in the footnotes, Nita. I, I know it's a silly statute. I agree that it's a silly statute, especially for the dollar amount that we collect with the They don't get cited in their audit. This is how good these guys are. <laughs> They don't. That's why this clerk's going to change that statute. It's not a big deal, except for us. So, <laughs> it, it, and we're not worried about it. It's definitely not a material issue. I think we had a total of fifteen hundred dollars collected yeah. that hasn't been for, for the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not concerned. We're just following the Kansas statutes on that. We're the only so. ones that do. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be doing my job if I. I didn't know. No, it. I appreciate well, it. It's fifteen. Yeah, well, we talked then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So any questions over that? The rest of the footnotes are going to be the standard verbiage that we have seen year after year. So I wasn't going to go over those in detail unless you had specific questions. Any other questions? I will go ahead and jump over to the letters then, and that should be in your records. Um, you're going to have one that's called yeah. management letter on top. And basically this one, this is reporting the more what we would call severe issues. But within your cases, they're not really severe. They're issues that are out of your control. Um, we've actually cited them as significant issues because they're not creating material situations within the county. The first one is dealing with you just don't have enough staff on hand to do proper segregation of duties. And we understand that it's not financially feasible to have the amount of staff that you need to have those proper controls. And the second one is dealing with your journal entry process. Once again, it's a limitation of your computer software with the CIC. You just don't have enough staff on hand to do the full, have all the controls in place and put that. And journal entries are really an override of management controls. So without having enough people on staff to be able to review the journal entries that are posted throughout the year, or um, be able to run a report from the system showing all journal entries that were in fact posted, we have to note that as a significant issue. I talk to so, CIC yeah. about that report. And, yeah. yeah, you have communicated to me several times that they are working on that. And I believe there's some other counties that we work with that are trying to get CIC to change their software. It's just not a high priority on their list. Like right, because yeah. so. we have talked to them about it. I think in time, um, when more, mm -hmm. more and more counties will ask for it, and we'll yeah. hopefully get it. Yeah. The second letter is just the governance letter. This is where we just recommend our general uh, recommendations for internal controls or processes that could be changed. Um, the great news is we didn't have any new recommendations this year. Things are running that great throughout the county, no big surprises. Um, these are just items that have carried over from the previous years that just need a little bit more supervision on it to get cleaned up. The first one is employee evaluations. We, we really do recommend you document annual employee evaluations because that helps um, support your employee files. If there becomes a personal issue, someone has to be dismissed, you have that history documented within your files. <coughs> uh, we've already talked about the second one with the game license. 
On the health department, we just recommend that a reconciliation process be implemented uh, for accounts receivable. At a minimum, the receivable listing should be run at year end and on collectible accounts be submitted for state set off. Um, I know there was some change in um, supervision within that department and personnel, so that's probably got put on the back burner on there. And along with that, we recommend that anything that's being written off with that um, accounts receivable really should come up to you guys for an approval. I believe they're doing that currently with the EMS department, and that seems to be working rather well. Uh, we would recommend that process be extended to the health department as well, just so you're aware of what's being written off. All right. And then um, we also recommend that the health department establish a system to reconcile their collections to what's being remitted back over to Lisa. Lisa, they do. What we were given during the audit did not reconcile back. It was off about $4,000. And I believe it's because of the, how their system processes the write-offs and things like that. Because I... I With the insurance. I, I wasn't concerned with that dollar was, amount, so that's why we just put it as a general recommendation just to watch that a little closer in the future. Um, but she does get those receipts yeah, back I, on a daily basis. I give her basis, a monthly so. report. And then she lets me know if it matches her or not. And, and, I, and, I, and I think what she's doing, she's looking at what she gave you for deposit. She's not looking at her year-to-date reports when she runs it from her system over there. And that's because they go back in and they get notifications from the insurance companies to show us the write-off. So it's still shown as revenue, but then it's going to show us an expenditure within her system somehow. And she wasn't able to give us that detail at that time. Like the day of the year today. Right. So what I would recommend is that they look on it on, I mean, they're looking at each individual receipt mm -hmm. coming in, and those are matching. What I would do is then yeah, month end, as part of the month end process, just run that report, see if it ties to the GLD that Lisa provides to them for the month total. Because Lisa continues to send GL detail reports, I believe, mm -hmm. if they ask for them, to show the year that they told us on those for the accounts that are theirs. <clears throat> and then within the EMS fire department, we should reconcile the accounts for its records on the same thing um, with the receipts. They, they're looking at their daily receipts that they receive. They're using the QuickBooks file and tracking it. It, it becomes an issue with the write-offs on that. It doesn't match dollar for dollar, and you really have to dig into it. So if you guys want to go in and say, okay, do we have an issue with cash collection? It'd be a better control place for you to verify that if they could just pull up that monthly reconciliation and show you that it ties down to the penny to what's reported over the leases office for deposit. So, <coughs> excuse me. And then with the sheriff's department, there was there was significant improvement again from the previous year. However, they need to continue to review the monthly receipts receive from the treasurer's office and tie it back to their QuickBooks file. So it's the same situation there. Just to monitor that just a little bit better on their part. And really the reason why we recommend that is because it's hard to have controls with those fee offices. So that, that is your main control that I account for every dollar that comes through those offices because Lisa is only responsible for what is brought yes, up to see. her office at that point. So, um, and the same thing goes back to the segregation. It's hard to have controls in the smaller office system. It's not just viable to hire an additional employee to have those segregation duties. That's why we recommend those reconciliations. Do you think the health department and EMS has been notified and understand that? Yes, I believe my staff has um, communicated that to them. And if they have any questions, just have them give me a call directly, and I'll be happy to work with them. Do you have any questions on your I'm just glad you're done it, not me. What's <laughs> <laughs> improvement? That's all you expect. Well, <laughs> so it's mainly just housekeeping duties and yeah, just, monthly just housekeeping. Yes, just just tighten down on their reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's a how far off were you with the uh, 
EMS. You said 4,000 on the health department. You know, I really don't remember off the top of my head. I can get that figure for you on that if you'd like. Most of those are right off anyways. Right. Well, that's the difference that she's that they're seeing. I, I will get that number we've in We've got to go last, you know, they just write it off. Yeah. <laughs> you know. We haven't been approached with writing anything off of that law. No, but what she's talking about is the insurance right now. Right, because you don't well, have to off the insurance right now. Yeah, well, we, well, we write off they see that. But after we've done this, yeah. the set the set aside program or the whatever in Kansas, they that have, we've, we've done that with, you know, the hospital's done that, and the EMS has done it. I don't know about the health department, but I'm assuming they won't. Yes, they do have some. I don't know if they submitted any in the current year at this point with the change in staffing. And I think, you know, the, in the health department, the you know, could be a new, uh, we just need to set a new protocol on, on how she's to do that. Mm -hmm. and that's because I don't know if she should know that. Yeah, I don't know if she starts out the way we need to get it done. I'm not saying what was done in the past was wrong, but I don't know that it was the way we have the other departments handle the accounts receivable. Um, 
you're still going to get um, some fluctuation on the change in your personal property taxes. So new improvements to the area, new personal property tax, changes in personal property taxes, you're still going to get an increase. I have an example that we were provided in one of the seminars we attended on this. I don't know how familiar you guys pay attention to the computation page on the budget. Ignore the bottom half. This is the exact same computation that they've done year after year after I started studying it in detail. It goes through, looks at what you levy in the past. It's going to account for your new improvements, the changes in personal property. It's going to take into account your valuations in the last year and this year and come down to what your percentage increase factor is. And that's basically based, it's going to be based on your personal property and your new improvements there. So you're still going to get small adjustments with that there, which is the same what we've had in the past, okay? So you're still going to get those slight adjustments and increases that way. It doesn't ever decrease on you. And then you're also going to get your consumer price index to get to what is allowed to let. Now, there are some exceptions with that. If you do have debt for a bond and interest fund, that is not limited for um, the computation here. That is separate and it's allowed to increase your levy just for debt. There's some other things like emergency services, I believe police, fire, and I believe EMS, I believe, was included in that as well. I'd have to go back to the detail of the bill that was passed. <laughs> And then that's what the second half of this expected computation page is going to be. It's going to compute up here, and then it's going to go through additional computations. Do you expect the need in your um, loans? Do we, do we have debt that we're going to have to pay off? It's going to give you more of a budget or more of a levy room at that point. Do you have any special assessments that we have to attach and get reimbursed for? Do we have any court judgments? Um, disaster expenses, things like that. So there are some exceptions to the rules there. I don't foresee using those exceptions a lot within your county. Um, maybe with the law enforcement, I need to do some looking and see if, because I know your prisoner keep, that fluctuates from year to year. So if we don't, if we know we're going to have a huge increase in prisoner keep expenses that are anticipated if the contracts go up with the neighboring counties, I'll look and see if maybe that would be able to let me more for that, since that is dealing with law enforcement. I'm not sure on that. I'm thinking that would be the main thing that would fluctuate for you that would qualify in that category. So it's not the whole sheriff's budget. I, I, I don't think there. so. I'm going to have to do okay. some looking on that. I didn't have the details to dig in on that yet. So, um, But basically, the big thing is, is that if something arises that you need to do to provide for the taxpayers within this community, and uh, you're going to have to take to a vote to get an increase on it. That's why everybody is saying you need to make sure you build enough of a cushion within your budget to cover for those items. Because otherwise, you're going to have to go to a public vote. You're going to have to pay for the cost of the public vote. So that's going to dig into what you're increasing your levy for anyway. Now, for a county, that's not as big of a hit. But for the cities that you've probably been visiting with, well, that's more of a bigger hit. Their mill levies are lower value than what uh, the county says. Does that kind of clarify your understanding of? I know it's still not going to be <laughs> crystal do, clear. I mean, I understand that part of it. I mean, we discuss kind of that, not in that part of depth, but in practical terms for us for planning. I mean, if if, if we carried over one point two million dollars from our last year or. 15's budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we need to look at really increasing, or do you think we're in a comfortable position? That's really not my place to make that decision for you. Um, that that would be a management decision, and I can't. I can advise you on the changes within each individual fund, and I can do a further analysis for you, so you can see the overall cash effect with each fund, if you would like that. So you can evaluate per fund. I could easily provide that, uh, but I can't advise you on whether to really increase it or decrease it because that's your position. From the changes decision. you've seen in the past with our county and the, 
and the audits you've done in the past. We really haven't changed much in, in the past to make the big difference in the lot of money, basically. Right. That's, I guess that's what I'm trying to foresee moving forward. What changes can we possibly face that well, we need to change that cash back? Our total fund One thing I guess I would point out is within your county general fund, your only way to increase your revenue from here on out without going to a public vote will be your fees that you're charging. Well, for example, think about the register fee. Mortgage registration fees are going away. So you're going to be losing revenue. That's going to continually go down until that revenue disappears. So you, I would recommend that you look at that see what you're going to lose, see if you can live without that revenue, or if you need to make up for it, and go through evaluations like that within the fees that you're collecting. Are there any other fees that we're going to be potentially losing in the future? I mean, obviously you don't want to surprise your taxpayers and go with a huge jump, because you're going to get a little bit of pushback on that this year. But um, I would go through that process and make sure that there's no other fees that you're going to be I, the register of these is the one that I can think of off the top of my head right now. It's kind of interesting that we okay. actually slashed our budget 14% last year, but our looking at the bottom line looks like we got through that pretty well, really. Yeah, it, it was a little hard um, on some of the departments, I believe, and we had we worked with Nita and those department heads on reallocating a few of the expenditures that came through in the 13th month that weren't expected that caused them to go over budget. But other than that, I believe it was just the two departments, solid waste and the appraisers. Everyone else pretty much was and able they, to stay within their, their budget. budget. So. At the same time, there's probably a few things equipment-wise that we could have replaced that we just didn't replace. Right, and, and that's something else you're going to want to take into consideration. Are you, do you have enough money to start setting aside enough surplus to start setting aside in your capital or yes, capital improvements fund and equipment reserve funds to cover those costs in the future? Because you're going to have to make sure that we budget for those in early on. Otherwise, it's going to have to go to a vote to be able to replace them. So, kind of like the road bridge. Do they have enough to cover the graders, their I mean, asphalt in, machines? In the future, like though, could the county, instead of of paying cash for those items, you could service debt from those items. You could. You could go out and do capital leases on those. Um, I mean, that, I, I was... And that would be something that you would want to evaluate, okay, if you have the cash on hand versus the interest rate, that, that would be right. my recommendation is the monitor. But I mean, I, I think one thing that you stated was that we could service debt from a rate of increase. That, that would be bond and interest okay. fund. There, there's okay. a difference between capital okay. leases and bond and interest fund. So I'm talking if you actually went out and did bonds. Right. If you went out and did, we were, we're paying off the uh, no fund warrants yes. this year. So if you went out and did more of those, those would qualify for that. Not capital lease right. payments because okay. those are going to run through your general operations. That's okay. really all that we are actually encouraging you to you know, sell bonds and go into debt and get by with that. I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't. But I agree with you on the equipment. That will never ever get an issue. Every time you replace the equipment, it's going to be higher. Right. And then that same budget we did buy some equipment. You know, a little bit. You know, we bought some and one thing that you might keep in mind going into this budget, if you want to keep your, because I know the valuations are still going down because of where we were last year. I've not added that to that. Two million? Okay. So if we're going down about two million, you're going to lose. I'm trying to think how much per mill that will be. Um, I get to those figures, so I'm not going to give you a number off the top of my head. But um, that's going to decrease your middle levy at that point. So you're going to already going to, you may not increase your dollars this year, but to stay where you're sitting, it's going to increase the middle levy itself. 
However, with the bond and interest, the November warrants being paid off, we're not going to be levying funds for those. So that kind of picks up some of that slack there. And we're basically just moving it over to the general fund or road bridge fund on there. Because mm -hmm. that one we won't have to levy funds for on the 17 budget. So that'll kind of help balance it out too. What happened in that's the decision to go. I can't remember the mill something we actually love with the bond interest. It was like one and a half. One and a half. So it's not very good. Okay. So the no fund warrants are paid off. Mm -hmm. That was June 1. June 1 they were? Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, you were officially debt free again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Well, it just doesn't make or? sense to stay afloat and go into debt. I mean, that's what they're encouraging. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and, and that, those but we don't have any other funds we can rob from to pay off. But keep, keep in mind, that's not new either with this. That's still the same rules in the past. We didn't have to pay have because we've always gone through a computation to see how right. much you're allowed. <laughs> To get an increase in your dollar amounts that you're levying, all we had to do was pass a resolution and publish it in the paper. Now we have to do a vote and publish it in the paper for this year. They're just making it go to a public vote and get the community support on that. Um, with the debt, you could always increase it because that debt was taken out of that computation for bond and interest. So, what had happened, you didn't actually have to approve an increase to cover the levying amount for the bonded interest for the other warrants. So that's not new, that's always been the case. They're just making it go to a public vote at this point rather than something as simple as passing a resolution, signing it, and publishing it in the paper. And I think that's really probably because they want the community more involved, they want um, people to take responsibility for their, they're wanting the services, so they want them to be aware of what they're going to have to pay for. But it makes it more difficult for you guys. <laughs> because, it, with it, and I'm not familiar with your voters, I don't go out and visit with them. Is that something, we, if a need came up the first for couple service, will be, The first couple that, will be shot down. I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. But the, as a communication, it's better. I mean, well, as the services go away. Yeah, some of the services go away. You'll have off. to hit rock bottom. Yeah. yeah. Because first of all, and I, unfortunately, I don't have a life. I sat and read the Senate substitute for House Bill 2088 several times. Um, you cannot piggyback the vote on an increase in taxes onto the August primary. No, no. That's expressly for, forbidden. No, it's got to be, it's a, gotta be a special <laughs> mail ballot. Mm -hmm. And historically, uh, mail ballot elections stand alone, you know, and you'll see typically like for school, you know, bond issues, et cetera. Typically, you're getting a turnout of about 12%. It's, it's guaranteed, they, they set it up so you're not going to get turnout right. on the question. And that's, you know, going to play into uh, the people who no new taxes, not now, not ever crowd. So I think you're going to have to hit rock bottom and start, you know, closing down roads, et cetera, et cetera, before you get the public's attention. And does the state still has the same rules that we have? No. At the county no. level? No. This only affected cities and counties. So it did not affect the townships. Did not affect the cemeteries, does not affect the fire districts, and it does not affect the schools. Hard to think of. The schools because they are So, what we can do when we're working on the budget, take the same approach that we've done in the past. I can work up multiple versions for you. Ada usually sends me the first ones that the department has to bring in. I'll work that up. I can send you guys a draft of it. You can look it over, start making your cuts at that point, and I can revise those pretty easily and continue to send those to you as we go through that process. 
And then if you require any further evaluation of cash flow usage within a for a period of time within any individual departments or funds, let me know and I can certainly go do that, pull that information from our audits. Unless there's a different approach you would rather take. <laughs> I just don't foresee a huge increase. I mean, I don't know how the taxpayers can afford a huge increase. I mean, especially with the way that some of the soil type changes hit some of the people in the southeast part of the county. And with the economic times, I just don't see it. That's the hard part. Yeah, it's going to be a challenging budget here. This is one where we need to pay attention to and get it right. I mean, if we see some first things that are definitely going to go up, hopefully we I mean, don't have to. I would recommend that you have each department go through. They have to go through annually and do an inventory. They're going to know the status of their equipment. Have them report back to you on how long their equipment is going to survive and do a timeline of when they think they're going to replace it, how long can they stretch it out and make sure that if you're not wanting to increase it, make sure you have enough reserves to cover those if something does go wrong and it's too costly to repair it versus replace it. That's what my recommendation would be. Because that's probably where your biggest surprise is going to be at this immediate future would be equipment replacement.
that I didn't, if that ever arose, you could use that as... We've got that. Correct. And we've also got that risk management fund. We use that for like, uh, say the sheriff hits a deer and it's not meet the deductible we buy, we pay for it out of that. And the bank insurance, you know. Um, so we've got some little funds hanging out there. How come the oil and gas depletion fund is not listed in the special purpose fund? In the special purpose fund, I'm sorry. Originally, that was money that you were just holding. You weren't authorized to use it for county operations. They came down, correct me if I'm wrong, two years ago? Or was it three years ago? Saying that you now have the authority to transfer that back into the county operation funds and use that for county purposes. But the fund itself is still considered a trust fund until we transfer it back over into the county operations. Get receipts on that fund of two hundred thousand this year. Yes, that I'm trying to remember if that, that is was the last, last payment. year. I believe that is the last that payment the last coming payment. through. I you will not see any more revenue coming right. in on that. And I think that was like a three year or two, 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 two or three year one. Thing. Well, right now we're at one point three million. So that is the largest that you will see that. Okay. I guess my question with, okay. with what that was established for, what liability does that put on the county? I mean, if that, if that money was in place to clean up oil sites and mm -hmm. clean up stuff. Actually, it wasn't. It was intended to offset loss of revenue when oil production uh, okay. Okay. declined. I thought that's what so the fields were One of my out. meetings we went to uh, in Wichita, that's what they said that fund was for, was cleaning up oil sites. No, that's a different fund versus the state of Kansas. The state has a fund for that. But I didn't know if there was liability in the past, but we didn't realize we actually had. No, I would say at that point, the only liability you would have on something like that is that if you actually own the property, that should be covered through insurance at that point. I don't know that we're. Um, Speculate going into budget season, I don't see as much of a hurdle really. I don't think. As long as our departments can keep managing their departments like they have been in the past, I think they've done a really good job. We're going to have to continue to do that. Yeah, it, it'll be, I mean, if you don't increase it, I mean, it'll be a tight budget. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be tight. As, as, a, tax, as a taxpayer, and it needs to be a tight budget. I, I understand. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know. I think. Because I pay a lot of taxes. <laughs> So then with the budget process, when do we think we're going to have our department head budgets? I told them to have them by the end of the month. End of this month? Okay. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and have staff start working on it with the actual figures, put in the estimates of where we're sitting. I can work on all the other funds, with the exception of County General and Rune Bridge, and get that worked up. But as soon as those start coming to end, we might go ahead and send this okay. to me unless you guys are going to review them and cut them before. We're not going to do the first draft. We're just going to do the first draft. We'll just do the first draft and see where it comes out. I mean, unless something's just totally out of line from where it was last year. How about transfers? Any transfers from County General into Reserve and County that you would like to see or that you would like to have done? Well, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Any transfers from the County General into Reserve? As of right now. I just want to make sure I got that built in with that first yeah. draft if there was something that you 
or one in the fee set aside? I just think, you know, first pass, take a peek at it, and then, then make decisions after. Well, we always try to think about it. Thousand or two thousand in that one, don't we? To kind of build up some enough for a copy what, machine hanger. What if you ran the numbers from what they were presented last year to see where it gives us a baseline? Oh, did you use last year's budgets? I can easily go in and plug in last year. I, I would be curious, so. curious to see that. I would be curious to see that before we get started. Okay. Uh, we can certainly do that. That's not a hassle. Huh? Because that would basically give us a no, virtually no change. Yep. And it gives us a baseline. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to run first draft just with prior to your budget. It would be interesting to see. I would say it would be close. I hope you have my budget sheet done by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 That would be the only thing. You've got. You're going to have to keep that. Mm -hmm. So if he does need something, I mean, just yeah. As soon as we get those figures from Nita, I think she says she's waiting on the state census. State census has to be to us by the 15th, and it usually comes at five o'clock on the 15th. The Carl's already certified. Yeah. I think I saw some of them come through already, but the mm -hmm. smaller and first sheets are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know how to get a hold of me if you have more questions or this process. And if you need me to come back down and we we'll do a face to face conversation on the budget again, we can do that. I'm always get them the phone. Well, when do you get it right this year? Well, well, we're we're right. together. For your now? Mm -hmm. That's fine. I don't understand that. Because it would be the last time you have any discretion. Do we have her numbers by then? Well, we should. I'd better do it after. Go ahead, department. You need to talk to them about that. Unless you want me to. Yeah, I mean, we can do that, but I would rather see what the no change would be before we talk to it. And it sounds like I probably wouldn't be able to get that to you until the 22nd, then, and that's if the state assessed numbers come through on the 17th. So I don't have the time to you say. Well, unless you're going to do an early meeting. I know people are already working on their budgets, department does. I know, but I don't. So, I don't know that they need to be fretting over this whole tax limit. Oh, I don't think they are. And inflate their budgets <coughs> if our numbers are. I don't think they are. In, in, in a close, I guess. I just don't want somebody going. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We had kind of a baseline to start from, then everybody would know where to work from from that point. Basically, last year's budget. Yeah, but we don't know how that's going to look at this point. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a rough idea of where you think the state assessed are going to come in at, huh? I would assume it's around last year's. Okay. Um, they don't fluctuate a whole lot around here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can get that worked up. I mean, it doesn't take long to put your budget together. So um, once we get the initial setup of it done, it's not hard to finish it up once we get those numbers. So you know, we can easily go change the department heads. Most of your departments don't fluctuate a whole lot between years anyway. They're usually fairly consistent. It's usually maybe a couple thousand dollars here or there. So if we follow last year's and just adjust those numbers accordingly to what they're needing, they shouldn't take too long. Sounds 
Thank you, thank you. Do you know what other counties are budgeting for Senate Bill 367? That huge unfunded mandate thrust upon the counties by the Kansas legislature, courtesy of the Pew Charitable Trust and some other do gooders? I do not off the top of my head. Because we crunched the numbers up in Ellsworth County and to comply with Senate Bill 367, which we're intentionally not going to do. Uh, we'd have to create 17 new jobs, which we're not going to do. I think there will be sufficient blowback from the public that Senate Bill 367 will die a horrible death sometime in 2017. Because amongst other things, it's taken away from the prosecutor, the elected prosecutor, the ability to prosecute juveniles. In other words, little Johnny Rotten steals your car and sets it on fire, and you come to see me, I'm going to say, not my job description, read Senate Bill 367. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had any of my other counties contact me regarding that one. In fact, our conversation yesterday was the first I had discussed that. So and, and I have pulled it up and read it. it it's coming under the radar. Very few people are aware of it. Uh, I'm supposed to participate in a panel on the 20... First of great bed. And uh, I sat down and drew this horrible flow chart which shows you, you know, before Senate Bill 367 and after. And as people look at me laugh. Um, that's the hospital uh, BKD audit for 2013 and 2014. Flag the two pages that you want to look at. And you, of course, are familiar with auditor speak, so you can. Perfect. Is this my copy? Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank I'll you. Get that. that sounds great. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good job. Okay. Thank you. Do you two want to get together and work on the budget for next year? We certainly can. Participate. I've already submitted my budget, um, but yeah, I can certainly sit down with any you know, department head or the board and you know, figure out where we're going. Good news for Stafford County is, other than traffic citations, filings are down. So uh, we have we have. Fewer people in custody. You gotta remember, for many years there, we had between 15 and 20 people locked up on a given day. Now we're typically are between 8 and 10. Do uh, you think if that increases, that would be an exemption to the property tax revenue? Uh, that's something I really have to look long and hard at. Uh, I'm going to say no uh, initially. Uh, it's, it's a poorly written bill. It's, because they talk about emergencies and all this, but there's no definitions. Uh, maybe I'm too big a fan of the Uniform Commercial Code where everything is defined. This can be litigation about this because it's so loosely written. I don't know if they left it loose on purpose or what. There's a lot of court cases on that. But. Yeah, I mean, what, what you're going to see happening is your county counselor or the city attorney is going to be running into a district court to get a, what's called a declaratory judgment. You know, from a judge, can we do this? And if the judge says, yeah, then you're, you're, you're protected even if the judge is wrong because you're acting in good faith. So, um, in other words, uh, more work for lawyers. That's what we need. But uh, you can see where the state of Kansas is definitely trying to raise revenue uh, on, uh, through the traffic filings and district courts. The statistical norm for this county for probably 10 years was between 300 and 350 traffic cases a year, so called TR cases in district court. We're already at that. So I think we're on pace to have between 750 and 1,000 traffic cases. And of course, I don't know if anybody's gotten a ticket here recently, but once upon a time there was space on the citation for one charge. And then for many years there was space for two charges. Now there's space for six charges. And I'm seeing a lot of, you know, four or five and six count
traffic tickets. Uh, the huge increases up along uh, I-70, uh, where you're seeing jumps of several thousand traffic cases a year. Well, you say, saying Stafford County is already up to three and a half? Yeah, yeah. You can't tell me that the you know, Kansas Highway Patrol is not getting pressure to write more tickets because we're seeing it everywhere. You're also seeing a lot more troopers on I-70 and a lot more drug sniffing dogs because uh, Kansas Highway Patrol is trying to make money hand over fist seizing assets and automobiles and whatnot. And they don't share with the uh, locals. That all goes to Topeka. Uh, but no, Senate Bill 367 is going to be the interesting thing because um, the state is shutting down it's all its kitty prisons, save for the, the pair of Pico. Larned is going to be closed. Uh, there's a grand total of 50 group home beds available under the new scheme for the entire state. The county is supposed to arrange for juvenile detention, you know, foster care, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We didn't have the resources to do that. It's pipe dream. Aside from, aside from Johnson and Sedgwick, I can't think of counties that could do that. And I think where the blowback is going to occur is in you know, those two counties, particularly Central County, because uh, if the cops have to, according to the new statutory scheme which goes into effect January 1, 2017. If the cops don't go to the prosecutor, they have to go to a juvenile intake board whose powers are very loosely defined. Uh, it's not even clear how many people are on this board, I assume an even number. The only interesting thing about it is it says the director of that board needs to be compensated. It doesn't say at what rate. So I'm well, if we have to have a board in Ellsworth County, I'm going to pull a dollar out of my pocket. Okay, you're compensated. But the blowback will be in Central County because that's where you got, you know, vicious, you know, 15, 16 year old 